I'm here in the most intelligent building of Deloitte, which is supposed to be extremely smart. But I'm certainly talking to a smart guy here, uh, Jakob Bursma. You're the thought leader of blockchain at Deloitte. We're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about the role blockchain plays inside Deloitte, how much they are working with it. Secondly, how Jakob is, uh, became the thought leader and, and what he's busy with. And then the thirdly, we're going to talk about the most interesting projects which are actually working now in production. Okay, so first, blockchain and Deloitte. When did yeah. that uh, get introduced? Uh, so yeah, b blockchain at Deloitte uh, has been uh, a topic for uh, for at least uh, the last f five years or so. Uh, but it really started uh, getting a lot of traction uh, three years ago, of course, with the whole blockchain hype, uh, the whole cryptocurrency uh, uh, boom. Um, and we have a, a very big uh, community within the Netherlands uh, uh, on blockchain uh, with through all the different uh, service lines that we have here at Deloitte. So there's auditors looking at it. There's people from the legal side, of course, from consulting, risk advisory, everywhere, uh, it, because it, it has a lot of different aspects. Yeah, but that's also in the Netherlands, but you also have a blockchain lab in uh, in Hong Kong or China or, or Singapore, where is it? Yeah, we actually have, uh, so we've organized it in a global way, and we actually have three blockchain labs. Uh, the, the I'm sorry, three. <laughs> three blockchain yeah. labs, yeah. 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 The, the European one is in Dublin and they coordinate everything throughout the whole uh, European uh, region. Then we have one in Hong Kong, as you said, who, who look at the Asian uh, market where a lot of stuff is happening. And then we have one in New Much York. Much faster than here. Eh? We are so slow. We are just doing it. I mean, there you have like 400 banks within 18 months uh, are getting a complete new SWIFT blockchain-based uh, system. And here we are step by step, everything organized, everything within the, the lanches, the limits. Yeah. yeah, they're also doing a lot in logistics, for example, uh, with, uh, with shipping documents with uh, uh, the, the banks and, uh, and, and trade finance, uh, with setting up... KYC, yeah. KYC, the yeah. shared by multiple banks, really yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah and uh, the, we're doing that in Europe as well, actually. Uh, but And then we have the, the New York Blockchain Lab, which, uh, which looks at the Americas, of course, where, where also a lot is happening. But uh, yeah, the, the, of course, uh, we, are, we are mostly looking at Europe, where yeah. it's... Uh, it's not only fashionable, you're really committed, you're really interested. It's not only just because you can sell consultancy, you've been really very active in the beginning so let's yeah. then let's then talk about you I mean uh, w where did you come up before you uh, did uh, Deloitte uh, so before I was at Deloitte, I was at uh, InnoPay, a very small uh, consulting company spe specifically focused on digital uh, payments uh, and there we uh, and identity. And there we actually uh, uh, discovered uh, Bitcoin, uh, so to speak, at uh, the end of 2010, beginning of 2011. Uh, and that at that time, nobody had heard about it. Uh, and we tried to educate banks about it, but it was yeah, it, it, they 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 totally didn't. Uh, really 2010, yeah. 2010. I mean, you 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 also. So we're at w when WikiLeaks uh, started to accept <laughs> donations through uh, forced donations through uh, blockchain uh, for Bitcoin. Yeah, so uh, so when uh, when when company or uh, when uh, uh, WikiLeaks was uh, was uh, kind of ba blacklisted by uh, by like Mastercard and Visa, you suddenly saw hey, but they can still accept uh, payments in uh, in cryptocurrency. So this whole anti um, uh, censorship uh, thing, or yeah, turned out to be really something that uh, that was uh, needed in some cases. Uh, that was your consultancy, your first yeah. consultancy job, but before you also worked at the government, right? Yeah. So uh, before that, I uh, I worked for Logius, which is uh, uh, runs the, the digital identity uh, uh, systems for the for the Dutch government. Mm -hmm. So I have uh, quite a track record in uh, PKI, in uh, in DigiD, uh, helped with uh, eherkenning. Uh, so yeah, I, I know a lot about uh, about identity uh, also in Europe. Yeah. Uh, it's also. Uh, <laughs> something that uh, that that is going quite slowly yeah, <laughs> extremely important i mean di digital identity i mean come on we our society is getting digital and it's so slow it is so slow but you also worked on eden right on the banking side yeah, so uh, so at, uh, at Deloitte we also uh, sorry at uh, at Inope uh, I have to say we also uh, uh, worked on Eden as kind of the identity version of Ideal. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, a really great idea, and uh, I, I I I really hope it gets uh, gets more traction. Yes. You're always five years ahead. Okay, so then let's <laughs> yeah. talk about what what we're now in 2019. We talked about you know it's 10 years old the blockchain and and the I the, the the proof of concepts have been you know like three years old. Yeah. Uh, What's now hot? At, uh, what, what, what makes you excited inside Deloitte? What projects are you uh, involved with? Uh, well, uh, I think I think there's 
there's two real uh, topics that are super interesting and uh, one is uh, around blockchain and real estate mm -hmm. uh, so really using the the immutable aspects of the blockchain to uh, register uh, digital building passports uh, and the other one is around so basically to prove that every document yeah no we have to go a little bit further I mean to prove it's in the commercial in the in commercial yeah. real estate right to prove that documents are real and that uh, identities yeah. are real and that you have timestamps and, yeah. and, and 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 hashes that you can yeah. prove document and that's really important that that sounds so basic <laughs> it is it is very basic but it, it solves a so so big a problem because there's so little transparency nobody trusts each other in the real estate business everybody uh, is trying to uh, to sell something with a for a better price than it's actually worth uh, and uh, and you really want to have provable uh, history of uh, of a real estate object and uh, that would nobody nobody is trusted as a third party to say okay if you basically do that uh, I will prove that this is really the right level of document, and this is the real. Uh, this is the real timestamp. You need something in between. And and what's the status of that project? What's the name of it? And what's the status of it? Uh, so the platform is called Axiom. Uh, and it's now going to go live, uh, hopefully uh, within the next month. Who are the launching partners? Um, I cannot say uh, too much about that, unfortunately, because uh, yeah, we uh, we have some uh, NDAs in place there. But we will hopefully be able to present it at uh, at some conferences uh, when it's live. At some conferences, okay, I know one which is and then, and then conference, yeah, <laughs> <Which one? laughs> the well, the blockchain innovation conference. Hopefully, we will be able to uh, to really show uh, show how it works and. And it's a production uh, system, right? It's not a, it's not a, not a proof of concept. It's really made for production. No, we 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 built the proof of concepts already two years ago, and then we thought, oh, this is really we can we can bring this to production, and then it turns out that it's pretty hard to actually bring uh, a blockchain POC to production because it uh, you really it doesn't need to only work at the demo level you have to really have it work all the time and uh, integrate with the existing SAP systems and Salesforce and all those kind of systems and uh, yeah that's where a lot of uh, sweat uh, has but that's the technical uh, part I mean that's all that's integrating also I mean one of our themes this year is how to get a consortia to work because I mean you you need a lot of people working together and you yep. need the biggest competitors to work together and so how to do that have you learned uh, have you some some you know blood sweat and blood sweat and tears to, to prove that you have worked on that yeah we have we have uh, done a lot of work there so Deloitte um, helps for example the the VACT consortium with uh, um, uh, energy trading yes, trading yeah uh, and we um, we are also uh, um, uh, doing some work for the B3I which is uh, uh, no, but fact you know we tell fact fact is a really interesting uh, concept I mean yep. already 40% of the brand oil uh, in the North Sea is traded on that platform and uh, how, wha how is your involvement with that yeah so so uh, we we don't do anything of the technical part of that because yeah uh, we, we're more specialized in 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 helping with uh, how to set up the governance how to work together with different parties who are normally each other's competitors how to find where is the the limit between what do you do together where do you standardize and what do you do uh, uh, apart from each other to be able to to specialize and be unique and uh, and be your uh, be yeah show that your brand uh, is also worth something so if you are in production that is really hard I mean the technical yeah. stuff is really hard and the tools are getting better but it's really but how does get these people together around the table and to come up with something which works is that working or is it already is that just as difficult as the technical part it is uh, I think just as difficult because you run into all kinds of things also around legal stuff uh, you have to make sure that new partners can also join otherwise you get into trouble with uh, with anti-competition uh, laws yeah. uh, so so it's not just that you start with a small group you have to plan for the future that others can also join and that and others, others can go away you know it's like like a little European Brexit kind of uh, <laughs> little yeah, yeah it's, well, really, it's really it's yeah, really interesting, interesting. Uh, well Brexit is also quite uh, quite interesting in that in that sense because a lot of these companies are of course uh, based in the U UK and uh, yeah so we uh, because I mean this fact thing is shared Shell, BP, yeah. uh, lots of banks yeah. are uh, are in there. Yeah, and uh, Equinor from the, from the Nordics, of course. Yeah. So it's a lot of cross border. Okay, so more of that at the Blockchain Innovation Conference uh, at in in, in uh, June seven. And then the, then the other one was B uh, B Free I. 
Uh, yeah, so B3I is about um, uh, insurance companies. So there's also a lot of money going around there and a lot of parties that, that have all these kind of contracts with each other. But uh, at the end of the month, then there's a lot of uh, problems with reconciliation. When, as you put that, if you put that on a, on a shared ledger, then there's no longer a problem because everybody has the same uh, source of truth. Yeah. But again, uh, the technical part is one thing, but working together with, uh, with these different uh, uh, companies and uh, having exactly the the same uh, uh, standards of what it means what you put in a legal contract uh, if you want to put that on the blockchain you have to be super clear about what you mean and uh, legal uh, legal because it's unmutable you know the, the, the nice thing is that it's unmutable so you have to be yeah. really so that's also the value of not putting it in a standard database but you know that everybody you cannot correct it later so you have to be much more accurate yeah, sometimes we, we, we discover that maybe you, the, the blockchain doesn't necessarily do anything that you could not do with a central database. But what it does do is it... You cannot do. You cannot do some things. Yeah. You cannot change afterwards. Exactly. And that yeah. forces you to really bring up the quality of your data and to really uh, standardize things that otherwise could be like a little bit fluffy and the gray areas and uh, where a lot of lawyers may be involved uh, to, to interpret it. And here you have no interpretation uh, room. So you have to have to make it super clear at the start after four years on the blockchain world or no 10 years even when you you were on the you started to develop but four years of blockchain inside Deloitte are you still you know are you getting tired or are you going like hey we're getting closer to 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 real uh, real systems what, what's your feeling about it uh, I, th I think that uh, with the blockchain hype going down a little bit it actually forces us to focus more on what actually works and really uh, solving actual problems rather than uh, weird kind of things like let's put all the coffee machines on the blockchain. <laughs> the actual project that we did. <laughs> yeah, but it's uh, and, and now you really look at where is the actual... Uh, yeah, there's going to be a hell of a lot of... Uh uh, you know, Internet of Things, where we have millions and millions of devices, which which we cannot build interfaces between. We need you need to have some kind of a bus or some kind of a way to verify that really what they say and what they do is verified. So it's not completely crazy. No, no, no. Sorry, I, I use it as a bit of a crazy example, but it, you're absolutely right. So, so IoT and blockchain and uh, uh, advanced analytics and blockchain. I think those are the really kind of interesting ways going forward to do all the. Uh, to d yeah, there's a lot of problems. That can still yeah, be going solved. to decentralization, the decentralization of energy, and every solar panel and every wind needs to, you know, put their production on some kind of a blockchain, or uh, so that it cannot be changed afterwards, and yeah. you can verify that it's there. Okay, so I'm not, I'm a little picky on that. Hey, um, your old love, identity, <laughs> identity on the blockchain. What's happening with that? Because we need to fix it. What are the big, uh, what are the big interesting examples there? Well, there's a lot of work going into things like uh, called self-sovereign identity. Uh, the Dutch government has also done some experiments, but what I think is really interesting is there's been um, uh, a call for proposals from the UNHCR, the, the, the UN um, uh, refugee organization, to uh, really once and for all solve the problem uh, in the humanitarian space of giving an identity, a digital identity, to people who no longer have... Uh, it cannot be too expensive and it has to be fast and it has to be verifiable and then, and then you have to use it all the time afterwards. Yeah, it's, it's really... It's yeah. really really a very good crisis <laughs> to develop the technology. Yeah, yeah. so th this is definitely something that we need to solve uh, to in order to give people uh, who have been, been moved from their, o from their home countries uh, a way to participate in, uh, in society because everything is getting digital. If they don't have a digital identity, they, they cannot, uh, cannot participate. So they all have a phone and they all have an, and they can download the app of the UNHCR and uh, it basically get verified by the red cross or by uh, borders uh, without uh, doctors without border anybody and then they can build an identity and get stronger and stronger and and but they can share it with other people yeah and I, I think the identity is the first step but that's not even the most interesting i think interesting is things like credentials about uh, what education have you had yeah, what you can, then you can start from there i mean if you are if you have you can build something and yeah. then Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe even open bank accounts. Get uh, get a mobile phone uh, uh, a subscription. Uh, really active. Uh, be an active part of the economy. Yeah. So still enthusiastic about blockchain. There's no blockchain winter in uh, in Deloitte. Um, yeah, I think I think there is, but I think it's a good thing because it, it forces you to show that you're actually solving problems rather than uh, be, being able to say, oh, we use blockchain and that's that's the end of the end of the story. 
was interesting. It, uh, when uh, This is the sixth year I organized a blockchain conference. In the beginning, 70% of the people came to the blockchain for dummies at the beginning because they had no idea why they were coming to the conference, but they heard it was a solution for everything. And now it's about a third. How, how is that with you? Uh, how's, how's the interest in that uh, in, inside Deloitte? Yeah, so we also organize inside Deloitte blockchain for dummies sessions, and uh, and they're still very well um, uh, visited. So so there's a lot of people still very interested in learning more about this technology. And actually, I think so. Uh, uh, five years ago, uh, nobody had had no, no knew anything. So you could start from scratch. Yeah. Now everybody thinks they know it uh, because they've heard it uh, maybe a few times and seen a few YouTube videos. Not from you, of course, but from uh, from people who explain it uh, uh, in a wrong way, and they think they know everything and then you have to re-educate them to really say okay but this is what actually what actually is solved and the it unknown known and the yeah. unknown known yeah and the un un unknown is really uh, people think that that's the most dangerous if you think you know everything no absolutely my 13 year old kid okay let's not talk about it okay hey so we see you at the blockchain innovation conference on june the 7th with the latest and greatest uh, with the great the latest and greatest uh, cases absolutely you've been there before oh i've been there since the beginning yeah yeah so what do you think of it uh, it's a it's a great place to to hear what's going on in in the blockchain land. Yeah. Okay. See you there, June the seventh.